What's up guys? This is Mads Abraham and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is the third episode for our podcast wherein I am interviewing different pharmacists in the different field. So for this video, we will be interviewing a pharmacist in the field of research. So very interesting to kasi ako personally, I don't know so much about this field and so I'm really interested to get to know more about it. So before we welcome our guest, I would like to introduce him first. Kuya Riz actually graduated from BS Pharmacy, major in clinical pharmacy last 2016. So, magka-batch kami noon. He wasn't just the top one in their batch. He was top one in the entire UST for 2016. Imagine nyo guys, batch valedictorian. Siya, super idol namin siya. And other than that, he also placed first in the pharmacist's licensure examination no 2017 March. And after that, he has been working for almost five years in a contact research organization called Parexel. So let us all welcome Chris Jansen Pabla. Hi everyone. Thank you for inviting me, Mads. Thank you then so much for my If you have watched our first two episodes, basically, it's the same yung formula ng questions natin, but this time, it's a different field. For our first question, Kuya Gis, what did you do right after you got your license No, 2017, lalo na nag-talk ka? Actually, I was already working as a clinical research associate in Parexel by the time I got my license. The problem was the closest licensure exam at that time was June 2016 as well. So at that time, I was thinking, uh, I didn't want to spend all nine months just preparing and studying for the boards. So I decided to try my shot and apply for a job in one of the companies that, that I had uh, my internship in, which was Parexcel. So I got in and started to work there as a research operation assistant at Parexcel on August 2016. There's no requirement naman na you have to be a pharmacist, you have to be a nurse, you have to be a doctor or you have to be any any other profession. And then, can you tell us why did you choose this field among the so many fields in pharmacy? Bakat research? When I was in the, in the faculty of pharmacy, I was not even aware that there was a field like clinical research wherein pharmacists can get into or can choose as a career opportunity. I was only uh, introduced to it no I was internship na ako for manufacturing. I learned a lot uh, about the history of clinical research. So at that time, I was inspired. These innovations, these uh, new drug discoveries are becoming available to patients who really need them because of clinical trial. So at that point, parang I decided this could be a good opportunity for me to go into after I graduated pharmacy. So just a question, and I think a lot of people are also asking you this question. Why didn't you consider, or if you considered, why didn't you enter the medical field? I took up pharmacy with plans of taking medicine afterwards. That was my initial plan. That's the reason why I took pharmacy. And then <laughs> Yes, I, I did took the NMAT. But after three years of pharmacy, I started to weigh my options. Uh, I could take up medicine, but that would mean that it would entail a huge amount of time before I can start working, right? So I think for most people, that's one important decision point that they have to ask themselves. Are they willing to spend more time studying before they can really work? I'm not discouraging people naman to take up medicine. It depends talaga sa tao, right? Kung uh, ito ba talaga in line with their goal. Can they endure that that long of a time to study? And even after, you still have trainings, diba? And when I was introduced into the clinical trial field, uh, I thought, na, oh, it's almost the same, diba? It's yeah, very clinical. It is, yeah. It's very clinical. Yeah, I'm so I get, amazed. Yeah. And I, got to, I get to work with doctors, then I get to work with nurses, and I get to see new drugs that are coming in and how they are being conducted in a clinical trial setting. So, inclined ako to take uh, into the clinical trial field. I also want to ask, I'm sure kilala ka ng mga tao as always being on top, as always having this so many achievements. How did that help you or how did it become a burden to you in entering your field or in working? Most often than not, it's never the case na I want to top. That's why I study to top. Right. It's more of, uh, in my case, I really like studying pharmacy. How these small molecules can actually change uh, the processes in our body. 
for the better or for the worse, right? Yung mindset na you want to learn more about something that you're interested in. That's what uh, pushes me forward to to study when I was a student and now to work when when now that I am a clinical research associate. So it's all about your intention and it's all about the purpose. Passion. The, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. The, the passion. passion. Can you tell us naman what are the pros and cons of this field of research? Well, when you join or when you get into the clinical trial industry, you are exposed to the international stage. What I mean is that most clinical trials, they are multinational in scope. And that means you have to work with colleagues from different countries. So being part of a multinational team also gives you the opportunity to possibly migrate to other countries later on. You'll get a glimpse then of how the healthcare system of other countries work. You get to compare kung anong ginagawa ng ibang country versus kung anong ginagawa dito. And maybe, who knows, if you get uh, a high enough uh, position, you may be able to change uh, the healthcare system in our country as well for the better, diba? The other pro, I think, in terms of salary, personally naman kasi I, 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 I have not entered into other, cl- other pharmacy fields. But from what I heard, on the higher end of the spectrum in terms of salary. I think it's also important to realize that a higher salary would most often translate to higher demand and responsibility. If one would simply decide on a job solely on the salary, then I think that person will not stay long in the clinical uh, research field because it's very challenging, it's very difficult. And lastly, it's very fulfilling. Imagine if you're part of a clinical trial that's been running for so long, and then finally, it gets a marketing authorization, it gets a new drug approval, and now it's available to public, could cure their disease or it could treat their disease. So I think that is the ultimate reason why most people working in this industry stay in this industry despite the difficulties and the hardship that one has to go through. For the cons naman, working in the clinical research industry is very difficult and oftentimes it's overwhelming. Rightfully <laughs> uh, so because what we are dealing with are patients, diba? real people, and they are taking investigation of drugs. So that means that we have to be careful at every step of the way that we are always compliant with the, with the protocol, with international ethical standards, and with local regulations. Hindi lang kasi medical, medical uh, aspect ang tinitingnan namin. We also look at the logistics. Facilities are in place in the institution to make sure that uh, everything is well equipped and to make sure that the subjects are safe while they are conduct- uh, while they are participating in the study. Another con, if I if I might add, the adjustment period was very difficult because you have to learn a lot of things about clinical research that you didn't learn from from college. Meron din tayo study specific trainings that we did, that we had to do to ensure that we're up to date and we know what a protocol is for that clinical trial. So one of the cons talaga is that there are a lot of deadlines. As much as possible, we want to minimize the time it takes without, of course, cutting corners in terms of collecting enough data to analyze the safety and efficacy of the drug. In summary, yes, it could be rewarding in terms of salary, in terms of self-fulfillment. But of course, it's very difficult when we have to be a person who wants to work in this clinical trial industry. We have to be fast, we have to learn fast, we have to work fast. So that uh, our ultimate goal natin is to put that uh, new drug into the shelves of the pharmacy so that patients can purchase it and possibly treat their illness or conditions. For a person who recently passed the board exam and would like to enter this field, what are the minimum requirements? So pwede ba agad pumasok? If you're going in, as a research operation assistant or a clinical operations assistant, there's little to no requirement. But it's a different story if uh, you applied uh, as a CRA or a clinical research associate. The companies, the contract research organizations like Parexcel, IQVIA, PRA, so there are a lot of contract research organizations naman kasi in the Philippines. They usually look for CRAs with monitoring experience. Uh, monitoring meaning that they have managed clinical trials before, they have managed investigational sites before, they have worked with principal investigators before in a clinical study. It's uh, particularly difficult if you're a fresh grad and then nag-apply ka tagad as a CRA. Not because the companies don't have faith in fresh graduates. Hindi naman sa ganun. It's contracted by sponsors. 
sponsors are pharmaceutical companies. So, for example, Pfizer, uh, GSK, Merck. So, ultimately, si sponsor po kasi yung gumagawa ng clinical trial. They're the ones who formulates the protocol for a clinical trial. They will advertise their personnel na, okay, we have we have CRAs with experience with onco trials. We have CRAs with experience with diabetes trials, with COVID-19 trials. So most of the time, ang entry point talaga is through an assistant. And then after a few months or even a few years, it would depend. Of course, it's a it's an advantage if you had an internship in a contract research organization. Because at least kahit pa paano, meron kang exposure na rin. Since you said na it's kind of demanding in terms of the things that you have to do, how is the work-life balance? Most CROs, hindi sila time-dependent. So, in terms of uh, the time that I work, it's flexible. I can start work at 8, I can start work at 9 or even 10 and work at uh, 5, 6 or 7. It would depend on you. As long as you uh, get the job done, of course, or as long as you meet the deadlines. Ang mahirap lang din kasi is that you have to read a lot. Of course, you have to know any mga standards. You have to keep up to date because we use a lot of systems. So you have to learn new systems as you go. Even if ako for almost five years in the industry, there's so much more to learn. There's never going to be a time na okay, I know everything na because like research, everything is changing, di ba? Because if I don't, I'll get left behind. You still have a lot of time for social life, doing other things other than your. Uh, that would <laughs> it would really depend on the person because I'm not so much of an outgoing guy that I would like to go out uh, mm-hmm. during the weekends, and I'm more of an introvert. It's a bit weird since uh, if you want to work in this field, you have to be as extroverted as possible because you have to <laughs> collaborate with a lot of person, not just the Different doctors here, not just the investigation staff members. Yes, correct. So you have to collaborate with team members outside of your country. So since you've been handling a lot of clinical trials, can you tell us a bit about a clinical trial, like overview lang? Basically, these are researchers involving human subjects, human participants. And then the goal is to discover, to give into more detail the safety, efficacy of investigational drug. People often assume and equate clinical trial as treating patients as guinea pigs. So that may be true. Uh, hundreds of years ago, the, the industry has evolved from that. Because before, clinical trial, ang pinaka goal ng clinical trial is science. Pero now, what is more important than science is the safety and the well-being of the subjects. Because even before a patient decides to enter into a clinical trial, they have to undergo informed consent process. So yung eligibility assessment, ito yung inclusion and exclusion criteria to make sure that the right patient with the right disease gets into the trial. It's also important then sa mga patient uh, to know that this is one of their options in the joint exercise of deciding which regimen, diba? which treatment regimen they should take. Nothing is compulsory. It's their free choice to decide whether or not to join a trial or, you know, stick with the standard of care na treatment. Dapat binibigyan talaga ng option yung patients. Yes. <laughs> Before we end this podcast, this episode, do you have any final message for our incoming or current pharmacists whether or not they're considering this field? Uh, first and foremost, we have to know uh, what that path would entail what the job description is for a, for a particular career. So you have to uh, be honest uh, with yourself in terms of what is your goal and make sure to compare it with the job description that you uh, of the path that you would like to take and check if they align. If not, hindi ka magtatagal sa kahit anuman field, right? It also helps if you're interested in that field. If you're just doing it for the money, really you would not last long. Because in any job, naman, there are difficulties, diba? When those times come, at least you can go back to the reason why you join into this industry. Not only are your answers very inspiring, very informative, pa, and I really learned a lot 
from this interview. Hopefully, I know the, your viewers would learn something from this video. Yeah, I hope so too. So thank you very much for watching this video. And if you have any more questions or suggestions, you can just comment down below. Again, thank you very much, Queries. Of course. Thank you very much. Until next time.